Hey there guys and welcome back. Um, yeah, haven't uploaded a while, been pretty busy, and haven't really felt like playing because I mean, it's been the same game for a while, and I stopped grinding so hard so I was mostly doing games against like casual matches and stuff and that didn't feel as good for testing decks as pro ladder matches, so <laughs> didn't really feel like doing one, but we do have some homecoming news which is going to be awesome. I did already record this, but it messed up, so I have seen this now. <laughs> but I'll just go over the parts that I really liked and tell you guys about it. And the link will be in the description down below if you guys want to watch the whole Homecoming reveal. It's only like 8 minutes long. Don't show us too much, but yeah, let's get right into the things that I'm excited about. So I'll see you guys there. Alright, so here we got the new Mulligan screen. Mulligan screen looks awesome. Just going to pause this for a second. And yeah... The cards look better, um, they actually did a visual upgrade to the cards, and I mean, I liked how the borders were moved and everything, and the numbers are in the top left, makes the art stand out a lot more on these cards, and as you can see, like, a lot of the, obviously most of the card effects are changed, but like, all the bronze cards there, they're all like 4 powers, 5 powers, 8 powers, they're pretty low, and then, like, Rothian, whenever another unit dies, deal 1 damage to a random enemy unit, seems like they're going to change everything, which is pretty cool. Um, and this guy has five mulligans. Guess that's dependent on what leader you're running and how strong their ability is. So that's that's really cool that like oh depending on what leader you have, you're not only going to have his ability and that's going to be it and his strength. You're going to have um, a different amount of mulligans and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have Droll Agnes in there at two power. Wonder what he does now. <laughs> And we got, yeah, the werewolf's just immune, and he's a 5 power, so that's pretty crazy. Seems like they're really lower on the power of bronze cards. That's interesting, which they should be. And then here they go over it for a minute that, yeah, the person who goes first gets one additional mulligan, and the fact that there's a 10 card limit now. You can have now have more than 10 cards in your hand, and round 2 and 3 you draw 3 cards on round 2, 3 cards on round 3, um, if you don't already have 10, or if you have like 8, you're only going to draw 2, so that changes things up a lot, because, I mean, if you drive past in round 1, now your opponent just plays a card, they draw a card, you don't draw a card, and you're back to 10 versus 10, so no point in drive passing round 1. There's like no point in drive passing um, for until after you play 3 cards, at least, because you're not going to draw anything if you do, so... That's pretty interesting, and that also helps with the dry passing round two, unless you go into a really round, long round one. Because if you play a round one with like five cards, you play five cards, okay, you pass, then your opponent can dry pass you, and then somebody's going to miss out on a card because they'll only have five cards available, draw instead of six. So that's really interesting. Um, yeah, and here, just throwing off some more of the mulligan screen and the way cards look. I'm probably going to do a separate video over every card that they've shown us so far and their effects, what I think about them, because they are also taking out silvers. There's only going to be bronze and gold. That's it. So I don't know how that's going to work for a return dust value or anything like that. So that's pretty interesting. So they're making golds really strong and then bronzes are going to be weaker. So your golds are going to be your key plays. That's going to be interesting. And then we'll go to the visual update board here. Oh, oh man, the visual update board looks so amazing. Let's skip ahead a little bit. There we go. Um, two rows, of course, whatever. I don't really feel one way or another on that. But the fact that the board looks so awesome, like, that looks better than Artifact. And Artifact was looking pretty impressive because I've been checking out stuff about that. But you got your leader there, depending on what leader you run. It's going to be on the board too, so that's really cool. I mean, this board looks awesome, and it's going to look different for what faction you're running. So that's really, really awesome. That's got me pretty excited. Cause, and your hand's bigger because they made the pass screen over there smaller and stuff. So that's like the pass button is really small on the right-hand side. Then you got your hand, and your deck looks better too because your deck is like not all perfect like it usually is. It looks like it's actually a deck placed on the board. So that's really impressive. I mean, visual update is definitely awesome. They don't tell us too much about the game's gameplay yet in this video, but the visual visuals look really nice now. Um, the two rows, yeah, here we go, the two row limit. 
skip ahead to Iris. Iris is one of the cards that they fully showed us. Um, since there's two row limit, a lot of cards are going to have like a special effect that uh, if you play it on the melee row, it does something. If you play it on the range row, it does something else. So like Iris, you play her on the melee row, you destroy an artifact, which she's a gold now, okay. Um, then uh, if you play her on the range row, she's basically a clear skies. So that's really cool. Not sure what an artifact is. They haven't shown us what that is yet. That's going to be something new. I don't know if it's going to be like magic or the gathering where you have like this artifact over on the side that does something or not. But we'll have to wait and see because that's pretty interesting. And so yeah, that's what's going on with those. The melee and ranged row is all we're going to have. And cards are going to have different effects depending on where you play them. Pretty neat. Definitely gives them more room to do different card abilities and stuff because they were kind of pushing the limits on what they were able to do with the game with the old setup that they had. Now, here's the last thing they want to go over from the video. If you see the Sabbaths, totally changed, totally different effect. But cards are going to have, there we go, order, damage a unit by two, one cooldown, two reach. Have no clue what any of those things mean, but that's a lot of different, I mean, well, cooldown, obviously, you can only activate it once every certain amount of turns but order the way the old order effect was every time you activated your leader ability you this card came from your deck or did something so i'm guessing that leader abilities are going to refresh instead of just like oh i play my leader and then i do this effect it's going to be oh every two turns if i'm running woodland spirit i can do this or something like sort of like hearthstone if you played that like the mage can cast that fireball every turn or whatever so this guy every time you activate your leader ability damage a unit by two one cooldown two reach not sure what that means maybe it means it can only go two rows so he can only damage the six power that's two in front of him i think that's what actually what happens yeah so that's what reach means that's pretty interesting so depending on what row you play your cards on they're going to have a certain amount of reach so they can sort of interact that with like ranged rows and stuff like if you play this on the range row which is the back row and only give it two reach so we can only hit things in the front row then it could have a better effect for the sacrifice that you're making for not being able to hit something on their back row which makes the back row your more safer row and the front row the more riskier row so that's if there's more cars like that which i'm guessing there's going to be so that uh as far as reach goes so that's going to be really interesting definitely going to change up the gameplay because if that's how it's going to work then your melee row is going to be your more riskier row to play on and this whole game is going to be totally different but yeah just fireball. the fireball effect <laughs> it looks amazing so if you want to watch the video without me totally butchering it by just like pausing it and stuff to talk about how i wanted it how I wanted to then that'll be down in the description but overall this has got me really excited for Gwent because I was expecting some stuff not this big of a visual overhaul I was expecting all the cards to be changed but it looks like wow wow <laughs> it's gonna be pretty crazy guys um the only thing that's weird is that they're getting rid of silver cards so there's only going to be two rarities bronze and gold not sure if there's going to be common and uncommon or if it's just going to be common and gold because that's going to be horrible for dust value. Like, it's the only thing that has me iffy about this whole thing is how they're going to do the dust value from now on. Because, I mean, you know how many commons it takes you to mill to make a gold. So, <laughs> if it takes, if they're going to make like a ton more gold than there are bronzes, then it's going to be so hard to get a complete collection and stuff. So, I don't know, I'm kind of worried about that. But overall, it looks like pretty cool from what I've seen really excited and i might have another video for you guys but yeah that's about it for this one guys i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one till then have a good one